And ano kayang nagagawa ni Mama Mary that she was given that title? Although Father has led us into prayer already, but I invite you to pray with me the prayer of the Our Lady of the Atonement. Together, we pray. We salute you, Holy Mary, Daughter of God the Father, and entreat you to obtain for us a devotion like your own to the most sweet will of God. We salute you, Virgin Mother of God and Son, and entreat you to obtain for us such union with the Sacred Heart of Jesus, that our own hearts may burn with love of God and an ardent zeal for the salvation of souls. We salute you, Immaculate Spouse of God, the Holy Spirit, and entreat you to obtain for us such yielding of ourselves to the Blessed Spirit that He may in all things direct and rule our hearts and that we may never grieve Him in thought, word, and deed. Amen. Good morning, Kasin. Magandang umaga na imbag nga ibigat tayo. Okay? Rugyan tayo. Daito'y katikisis about Our Lady of the Atonement. Siguro marami sa atin hindi pa alam kung bakit nabigyan ang mahal na ina ng title na Our Lady of the Atonement. Nagsimula ito sa mga friars, Franciscan friars of the atonement and they speak on how they experienced or they were inspired to give Our Lady, Our Lady of the Atonement. The Franciscan friars of the atonement have a particular devotion to Our Lady of the Atonement and trusting their charism of unity and reconciliation to her. So dito pa lang, nakikita natin na idinudulog ng mga Franciscan friars na ito yung pagkakaisa ng bawat isa at pagkakaisa ng buong mundo. Na ang streamline ng pagkakaisa naway magkaroon tayo lahat ng kapayapaan. Their knowledge of her and experiences of her intercession are a testimony of her guidance to so many under this title. So, balik tayo history, no? In 1909, the Society of the Atonement, or ang initial nila as a congregation is SA, Society of the Atonement, entered the Catholic Church. Baka sabihin nyo, bakit entered the Catholic Church? Dito, makikita natin yung unang paggalaw ng Birhen Maria sa kanila kasi hindi sila nagsimula as Catholics. Dito, makikita na natin yung paggalaw, yung intercession ni Our Lady for conversion. Servant of God, Father Paul, makikita natin sa picture, of Graymore. Yung Graymore is a place in New York. The founders of the Friars of the Atonement had long and deep devotion to the Blessed Mother. And he was the first to in, in, invoke her by this title. So yung siya yung una na, nag, na dumulog sa kanya at humiling ng mga biyaya ng pagkakaisa. On April 10, 1919, Pope Benedict XV gave formal approval for the Church's recognition of Mary under the title Our Lady of the Atonement. So, 1919 po nagsimula. Siguro marami sa atin hindi pa ipinanganak sa panahon na yan. So, in September 1932, issue of the Lamp magazine ng mga SA ito, Father Paul wrote, and I quote, When we therefore give our Blessed Mother the title of Our Lady of the Atonement, we mean Our Lady of Unity, Ina ng Pagkakaisa. So kung may mga issues na tayo dito ng mga conflicts, ang mahal na ina ang ating lapitan, Our Lady of the Atonement. Father Paul was focused on Mary at the foot of the cross when Christ made her the mother of all humanity. So, doon lumuluhod siya 
nananalangin ng taimtim, humihiling sa tulong ng mahal na ina to intercede for unity for all humanity. And emphasized her work for unity and her intercession on behalf of all people with God in Christ. So, hindi tayo makadiretso sa ama kung hindi dadaan sa kanyang ina na siyang bubulong sa kanyang anak. Napakahalaga, mga kapatid, ang role ng isang ina. At sa ating pananampalataya, napakahalaga ang role na ginagampanan ng ating mahal na ina na dito sa kanyang estatwa o imaheng ito, ipinapalihiwatig niya at ipinapaalala niya sa atin ang kahalagahan ng pagkakaisa. So Father Paul wrote in her wonderful condescension and love, the mother of God has been pleased to reveal herself to the children of the atonement under a new name, thus giving remarkable evidence of the honor, love, and prayers to her as the Our Lady of the Atonement. In a sermon, he said, When therefore we address the Blessed Virgin Mary as Our Lady of the Atonement, we think of her as the connecting link between ourselves and God. So, nabanggit ko earlier na hindi tayo makadiretso sa Panginoon kung hindi dadaan sa mahal na ina and then ang ating mahal na ina ang connecting link kay Kristo na kanyang anak para makarating tayo sa Ama. So, to bring about this blissful state of unity which will constitute the joy of heaven. So the league of prayer of for unity directed by the friars with nearly 100,000 members is under her patroness of Our Lady of the Atonement. So ito nagsimula nung 19, 1919 yung debosyon na ipisin, ipinasimuno ng mga Society of the Atonement. And then the Rosalie League is promoted by the Atonement Sisters. So, hindi lang male society or congregation ito, meron din silang female counterpart. Okay, dalawa ang founders nila. Malalaman natin mamaya. So, Atonement of course means the satisfaction which Jesus made to God through the shedding of His precious blood. Napakagandang pagninilay-nilayan natin ito, lalo na ngayong panahon ng kwaresma at nalalapit na tayo sa mga mahal na araw. So, the shedding of Christ's precious, precious blood for the atonement of our sins. So, this, is, this happened upon Calvary and by which God and man were reconciled or made to be at one or united. As a title for Mary, it signifies her role in the mystery of Calvary, secondary to, but fully united with the sacrifice of Christ. So, pag dumulog tayo sa mahal na ina, birhen ng Our Lady of, uh, ng birhen ng atonement, dito na ipapaalala sa atin yung kahalagahan ng sakripisyo ng kanyang anak sa pagbuhos ng kanyang dugo para lang maligtas or manumbalik tayo sa bag tayo sa bagong buhay no that we were given a gift of new life yun din ang i celebrate natin sa Easter so the sorrows which pierced the heart of Jesus also pierced the soul of Mary and as she stood by the cross all the passion and death of her beloved son was also her own. Pasasaan ba na yung ina? Ramdam niya lahat ng pinagdadaanan ng kanyang ina, anak. So tayo na mga anak ng mahal na ina, pasasaan ba't dumulog tayo sa ating mahal na ina nang sa gayon matugunan ang ating mga hinaing o ang mga niluloob ng ating puso. So anong ibig sabihin ngayon ng kanyang imahe? Our Lady of the Atonement. 
As Our Lady of the Atonement, Mary wears red mantle. No? Red mantle ito po, yung pula. No? Red mantle, which symbolizes the precious blood, which is the immac immaculate source and by which she became the fairest prize of God's redemptive love. Napakahalaga, mga kapatid, na pagmamahal. Pagmamahal na dalisay na handang ibuhos ang dugo para sa kaligtasan ng lahat. Okay? It is that we attain that through the intercession of Our Lady of the Atonement. Our Lady of the Atonement is depicted wearing a golden crown. Yun ang makikita natin mamaya, no? Crown of 12 stars, yung nandun na ngayon, crown of 12 stars, ipinahihiwatig din yan, mga kapatid, yung 12 tribes of Israel. Na dahil sa inang Maria, anumang klaseng tribu meron tayo, tayo ay mapapalapit sa kanyang anak. Yaman lamang kung dumulog tayo sa kanya. Okay. Yung blue tunic niya, yung blue, makikita natin doon, no? yun yung symbol talaga ng Our Lady. Pagka Our Lady, that lagi-lagi blue. So in her arms, tingnan natin, ha? in her arms, she holds the infant Jesus and He carries a cross in His right hand. The sign and seal of the atonement. Imagine, bata pa siya. Alam na niya yung napakahalagang misyon kung bakit siya ipinadala ng Ama dito. At yun ang ipagdiriwang natin ngayong araw na ito. The solemnity of the Annunciation. That when Angel Gabriel announced Mary to bear the Son of God, Mary took a very great role in our humanity and in our faith life because of her fiat, her yes. Niya nga tanuhan nga nagwen ni Mary, saan tayo pupulutin? Huh? So it's really just right and fitting na anuman ang pinagdadaanan natin, dumulog tayo sa mahal na ina. So because of the red robe, Again, Father Paul often spoke of Mary as our Lady of the Red Mantle. The red mantle signifies the precious blood of Jesus. She holds in her arms the Christ child who holds a cross in his right hand, which means through the cross we are saved. And through Christ being nailed to the cross, and from that cross, He shed His precious blood and that our sins were atoned and we were united once again to the Father. It was during the shedding of the most precious blood, Father Paul explained, that the atoning sacrifice was enacted and it is most fitting that she should wear a red mantle accepting our homage and devotion under the title of Our Lady of the Atonement. Her image was painted by Giovanni Martini in 1929 and by Mother Margaret Mary Nilis in 1933. At kung titigan natin ngayon ang imahe na ito, nandito po yung gumawa ng rebulto or imaheng ito. Nasaan si Brother Ferdy? No? Si Brother Ferdy, yung naka-three-fourths kanina, siya po ang gumawa ng napakagandang imahe na ito. Palakpakan nga natin si Brother Ferdy. Nasaan si Ferdy? Okay? So, ipagdasal din natin siya kasi marami na siyang nagawang mga imahe. Okay? So, dahil sa kanya, sa kanyang reflection, lumabas itong napakagandang imahe ng ating mahal na ina, 
Our Lady of the Atonement. And shout out din, nandito din yung kapatid ecclesiastical photographers. Sila po yung nagpapalaganap sa mga kanilang pictures. Yun yung mga lumalabas sa estampita. Shout out, nandito po sila yung mga may hawak ng kamera. Okay? Yun po ay personal din na devotion nila sa Our Lady at yung mga nakukuha nilang pictures inisinasubmit sa kung saan parokya sila magko-cover at ibinigbigay po nila ng libre sa parokya. So, sila din ang nag-take ng picture sa nandito po sa aking PowerPoint presentation. Thank you sa inyong lahat mga kapatid. Okay. So the title, Our Lady of the Atonement, in Latin it is called Domina Nostra Adonationis. It is a title of the Blessed Virgin Mary, first invoked by Father Paul T. Watson. Si yung conversion din ni Father Paul, nung hindi pa, nung Anglican pa siya, ang kanyang pangalan is Father Louis. And then nung nag-convert siya into Catholicism, naging Father Paul Watson. S.A. S.A. po yung uh, uh, title nila, Society of the Atonement. And his co-founder was Mother Lorana White. White po yung piliedo niya, S.A. They are both the founders of the Society of the Atonement. So Father Paul also gave atonement another meaning. Napakaganda po, at one meant. Nandun po yung word na one. Ibig sabihin, pag kakaisa regardless of our status in life sa mata ng Diyos at kung dumulog tayo sa inang Maria tayo ay pantay-pantay pre-preho lang ika nga pare-pareho lang so that's the virgin mother is our lady of at one meant praying for the extension of the church and the unity of all men in one fold Pagkakaisa na talaga ang hiling ng ating mahal na ina through Christ. So let us look up at her, all radiant her, on her throne, declared Father Paul, apparelled in the crimson robe of the precious blood, interceding at this moment for the great at one man or for our great unity. Let us think of her as our lady of unity And let us consecrate ourselves afresh at her altar to bring our separated brethren into the unity of the one fold under the one shepherd. So, yun po yung mawi-witness natin mamaya within the mass. Pagkukurunahan po siya ng ating mahal na ubispo. The prayer of Our Lady for Unity has a particular urgency at the present time. So yung dinasal natin kanina na prayer to Our Lady of the Atonement. Pope John Paul II, now Saint John Paul II, has constantly asked for prayers for reconciliation, reunion, and unity. It was the theme of his pontificate. Sinasabi nga si Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul II is a Marian Pope. Okay? Siya rin yung gumawa yung Rosario Virginis Maria. So he has said that the house of the popes is the house of Mary and that this is a Marian age and it becomes clearer day by day that the way for us all to return to God is assured by Mary. That Mary is the basis of our confidence, the guarantee of our security, The foundation of our hope. Pundasyon, tinamnama tayo. At our Lady of the Atonement is our way to Christ. Isu, tidalan tayo nga agturong kani Apo Diyos. The Blessed Virgin is the way to Christ for all men, and of course, women, for those who believe in Him. Though they are cut off from full unity through schism, heresy, crimes, or any other estrangement. She is also the way to Christ for those who do not believe in Him. The Muslims, Jewish people, communists, and atheists. Our Lady is the mother of the world whose consuming desire is to bring all peoples, all men and women, to the heart of Christ. 
Our Lady of the Atonement is a fitting title for the Blessed Virgin. It is a concept which should appeal to all the faithful to pray to her as the mother of sorrows for the cause of Christian unity. So dito hindi pa po gaano laganap yung devotion sa Our Lady of the Atonement. May nakikita po ako ng mga ladies dyan, sila po yung mga OLAD, no? O-L-A-D, Our Lady of the Atonement Devotees. So, napasama ako nung nag-pilgrimage sila, parang tatlong van lang sila. So, you invite, kaway-kaway sa mga Our Lady of Atonement members, ayan. Sila po yung mga members ng OLAD. So, everybody is welcome to join that devotion para ipalaganap natin una dito sa diocese natin and then we invite from other, from other places kasi napakaganda po yung mag sa ating mahal na ina, the Our Lady of the Atonement. So for just as surely as she brought the gray more religious into the church more than 50 years ago, she will lead countless other souls to their true spiritual home. Imagine, Anglo, Anglican itong mga naunang ito. But because of their devotion, they found their way to the Catholic faith. Buong society naging katoliko under the leadership of Father Paul and Mother Lorana. We must not fail in our duty to, of prayer to her for the reunion of Christendom and the conversion of the world. We must heed the voice of the Lord's vicar on earth and with the fullest confidence we say, Our Lady of the Atonement, pray for us that all may be one. Harinawa, Our Lady, nga amin nga tattao ditoy lubong agkay kaysa sapay ko matatayip iti pa nang ibabaet mon agtalnan ti giera ti yuktirasya ken Ukraine o alam yan ni ano Brian so ano yung history of our lady of the atonement so in joint 1899 so 18th century pa ito ha? So ni Reverend Louis Watson, now Father Paul, professed his vows as a friar of the atonement, taking the name Paul James Francis. So from Louis to Paul James Francis. So ito nabanggit ko na kanina na in 1901 siya yung nagpasimuno o nagpasimula ng debosyon ng Our Lady of the Atonement. So, the Our Lady of the Atonement adapting prayers to Our Lady of Soros. Doon nagsimula. Okay, nagtago siya, kinakawayan ko si Ferdy. So, that, that same year, he and Society of the Atonement's co-founder, Mother Lorana White, established the Rosary League of Our Lady of the Atonement. Kaya sila nagkaroon ng 100,000 followers in the 1900s. Okay? Napakaganda. I-brief ko lang na explanation ito. Dahil sa kanilang devotion na grocery ng Our Lady of the Atonement, nag-promote din sila ng red beaded rosary. Okay? So, red because it is in connection with the re red robe of Our Lady. Personal note, no? Pag nagdadasal ako ng mga mahigpit na intention na ipinapadasal sa akin at kung dudulog ako kay Our Lady of the Atonement, ito pong beads, rosary na ito ang ginagamit ko to remind me of the precious blood of Christ. So yon So ito yung nakita nila, makikita natin. And then in 1909, the Society of Atonement, okay, 18, 18 ano yung ano din, 1909, nung magkatoliko sila. Then, 1919, in sinabi ko na kanina yan. Okay? When we therefore give to our Blessed Mother the title of Our Lady of the Atonement, we mean Our Lady of Unity. Mahal na ina ng pagkakaisa. So, papaano lumaganap itong debosyon at ano yung mga legacy 
mga pagpapatunay, unang pagpapatunay yung buong society of the atonement na nagkatoliko. Saan ka pa? So walang imposible sa ating mga hinaing, sa ating mga pinagdadaanan na hindi natin mairaraos kung dumulog tayo kay mahal na ina. So the popularity of the founder as an Episcopal preacher and an editor of a small magazine respectively influenced the spread of the title among Anglicans, take note, among Anglicans and Anglo-Catholics that helped the society's arrival to the Catholic Church with Pope Benedict XV giving his formal approval in 1919. Several shrines and statues at Graymore, yung Graymore po sa New York yan, yung mga nanggagaling sa Amerika, makikita nyo to sa Graymore, Uh, yung church nila, lahat ng mga stained glass, yung stained glass na makikita natin, all images of the Our Lady of the Atonement. Yan, nakipanggit ko na. So, the Franciscan Sisters of the Atonement have a shrine to Our Lady of the Atonement near the entrance to Graymore. Okay, pagka mag-abroad kayo, pumunta kayo sa New York, hanapin nyo itong Graymore Place. And, Noon, 1946, doon nagsimulang na-approve na July 9 ang kanyang pista. And then, noong 1983, Our Lady of the Atonement Catholic Church in San Antonio, Texas was founded as an Anglican Youth Parish in the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of San Antonio. San Antonio under the pastoral pastoral provision rather of Pope John Paul II. So yan, maraming Episcopalian converts. Imagine, mga may posisyon na convert from Episcopalian to Catholic. Walang imposible. Uulit-ulitin ko yun. Okay? So, who had entered into full communion with the Catholic Church, the Episcopalians, but wished to preserve liturgical aspects of Anglican worship tradition. And in March 2017, the parish of Our Lady of the Atonement in San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas, became part of the personal ordinariate of the Chair of St. Peter. Atonement Academy is its parochial school. So, pag pumunta kayo sa San Antonio, Texas, meron kayong makikita doon na eskwela na ang ipininga, ipinangalan sa Our Lady of the Atonement. So, the intercession of Our Lady of the Atonement will aid in obtaining the fullness of reconciliation through the atonement of Jesus, her Son, our Lord, and in following God's will to preserve unity and peace. Her loving and merciful example guides us and gives us strength. Our Lady of the Atonement is a devotion of great help to anyone who is suffering or struggling with difficult circumstances. Oh, yung may mga pinagdadaanan yan. Alam na this. Our Lady of the Atonement is the medicine. Our Lady stood with faith love and strength at the foot of the cross while participating in our Lord's passion. The vibrant coloring of these rosary's beads reflect the most precious blood of Jesus that was shed for us. So, na sana habang nananalay tayo ayong ginaganyan natin yung rosary beads, we remember the precious blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. So, itong yung jasper na stone is also considered in the Old Testament as a breastplate of judgment. Nandyan yung mga scriptural citations niya. Okay, so the centerpiece of the rosary shows Our Lady of Atonement holding the Christ child who is carrying a cross at hand. So, yung mga makapunta sa abroad, I would encourage you na magkaroon ng rosary ng Our Lady of the Atonement, itong explanation na ito, nandun lahat sa rosary. Okay? 
So the letters SA stands for Society of the Atonement, and the T is actually a Tao cross, which signifies that the society is based on Franciscan spirituality. Kasi yung Franciscan cross, hindi lang ganyan, no? Ganyan, tapos may maliit, tapos may mas mala malapad sa. Okay, so this rosary is a wonderful gift. Pagka ano ha, pag makapunta kayo, alalahanin niyo ako. Okay. And the Feast of Our Lady of the Atonement. Noong June 14, 1946, dyan nagsimulan may declare na July 9 ang pista ng Our Lady of Atonement na siyang ipinagdiriwang natin dito sa diocese in recognition of the date on which Father Paul had re received the name for his society and the scripture text and not only so but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. So since then, July 9 na yung pista ng atonement. Ngayon, darating na tayo sa Baguio. Kanina, nasa New York tayo, nasa San Antonio, nakalanding na tayo. At imagine, ang paglanding natin, fast break, nandito na tayo ngayon sa loob ng cathedral. So, paano nakarating ang Our Lady of the Atonement dito sa Baguio? So, tingnan ninyo, napakaganda ang ating simbahan. The Baguio Cathedral or the Our Lady of the Atonement Cathedral is a cathedral dedicated to Our Lady of the Atonement for, famed for its Neogith Gothic style. Kita nyo, may, palawag ninyo, may paliwanag nyo yan. Distinct gray cream colored appearance. Ang dami yung dumadalaw ngayon na sabi nila, Ha! Ang ganda! Napaka-elegant ng cathedral natin. And it's very true. And thanks to those who work for the renovation of our church, our cathedral. They are the unsung heroes. But in gratitude, we pray for them in our hearts. Okay? Parang may twin towers, oh. Kita natin. Parang it reminds me of Petronas, yung twin towers doon sa Malaysia. Obvious ba na galing ako doon? Karot. So the architect architectural and historical landmark is considered to be the largest church in all Baguio City loca located atop a hill that looks out on the city. The church can be reached by taking the staircase. Yung na-blessed recently last October. Okay? It is called the Pilgrim Stairs with 100 steps or the access road yan, behind the Baguio Post Office building. So yun yung mga access para makarating tayo dito. The Cathedral of Our Lady of the Atonement in Baguio City, Philippines is named in honor of this devotion. The Cathedral History, the Cathedral survived the Allied carpet bombing of the city towards the end of the Second World War. And this cathedral is the sea or the seat of the Bishop of Baguio. Nandun, makikita natin yung katedra niya or the chair niya na nandun yung kanyang uh, logo. Pero magsesede bakante na yan pag alis po niya. So the architectural style, Romanesque, hindi na natin importante yung pag-usapan yan. Yan. So eto ang importante, how it was constructed. Before the Bag Baguio Cathedral was constructed, a chapel was first dedicated to St. Patrick. Siguro yung mga nakakaalam nito, kung may information kayo, please ibigay nyo po sa aming opisina kasi magkukulate tayo ng information para eventually yung Episcopal Coronation will become Canonical Coronation. Yung Episcopal kasi, it is done by the Episcopoy or the Bishop. Okay, Episcopos. Pero pag canonical, then higher ups na ng church. Okay, sinimulan ito ni Father Carlo. Kaya pala may ka Father Carlo Street John na dedicate sa kanya noong 1920. They are the Bel Belgian missionaries or the CICM. 
or the Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Under the leadership of Father Florimond Carlo ordered the building of the cathedral. The cathedral was said to be constructed by several uh, CICM priests and dozens of Igorot carpenters. So sana that when we enter this church, we also remember those hands and feet that started it and then eventually it became to what we are enjoying now as a place of worship. The hill where the Baguio Cathedral now settles was used to be called Campo by the Baguio Ibalois. It was then renamed Mount Mary. Then, July 9, 1936, yun na yung pagkakadedicate ng simbahan na ito as Our Lady of the Atonement in the Philippines. Ito pa lang po. We are making history in the Philippines. Ito pa lang ang nag-iisang cathedral all over the Philippines that is dedicated or under the titular of Our Lady of the Atonement. So the Baguio Cathedral was only uh, was the only building that survived the carpet bombing of the American planes to retake the city from the Japanese Imperial Army. At ito ang nag-serve as evacuation center noong 1945, saving thousands of civilian lives. So ang historical landmark has survived several disasters, including the 1990 Luzon earthquake. Ito lang yata yung hindi nasira. Noong 1990 earthquake. And then kung makita nyo, nandyan sa harapan yung slab na ito on the cathedral grounds where the victims of the carpet bombing of Baguio in 1945 are buried. Nandun po sa entrance sa bandang baba. So, nandito na tayo sa coronation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Bakit natin kukurunahan ang mahal na ina? Of course, it is a Catholic tradition to honor Mary, our Heavenly Mother, during the month of May by placing on her statue a crown of flowers to signify her honor as Queen of Heaven and Earth. Nangyayari yan sa mga Santa Cruzan, sa May devotions, no? Devotions to the Blessed Mother originated in the earliest days of the Church. The practice of crowning sacred images with flowers is an ancient practice, a form of reverence, panagdaydayaw. This devotional ceremony is a favorite tradition at parishes and Catholic schools and dioceses all over the world. The crowning of images of Our Lady was born out of devotion. At dahil din sa devotion natin, kaya natin gagawin ang pagkukorona, pagpuputong ng korona ngayon na aangkop dahil it, itong araw na ito ay kapistahan ng solemnidad ng Annunciation. Nung nag-yes si Maria na maging ina ni Jesus. Okay? So that she might cooperate with her son's saving mission. And during her earthly life, Mary chose to lead the plans God had for her. The crowning of Mary gives the faithful, but children in particular, an opportunity to especially honor the Blessed Mother of Jesus and to give thanks to her for bringing our Savior into the world. The practice of crowning an image okay, gained popularity in the 19th century. There are many reasons why queenship has been attributed to Mary. Some of the most common reasons are as follows. First, she is the mother of the Son of God. Who is the Messianic King? Kung hari yung anak mo, di ba? Automatic yan. Matik, magiging rey na ka. Huh? And pangalawa, Mary is the perfect disciple of Christ. She consented to God's plan. Nangyari ngayong araw na ito. Solemnity of the Annunciation. She listened to God's word and kept it in, in her heart. She remained steadfastly in close union with her son 
all the way to the foot of the cross and she persevered in prayer with the church. So yun, makita natin sa bago siya namatay. Nung itinalaga siya ni Jesus kay John, iba? Woman, this is your son. And son, this is your mother. Yun din yung pagpa, pagtatalaga ni Jesus sa atin sa pagmamahal ng ating mahal na ina. Thus, in an eminent way, she won the crown of glory that is promised to those who follow Christ. And our current Pope, Pope Francis said, and I quote, The Blessed Virgin Mary's path of faith and hope serves as an example to all. Therefore, time should be taken to reflect on our Lady's participation in the Paschal Mystery and in Pentecost at which, at which point the Church has its beginning. She, Mary prayed with the Apostles at Pentecost and that is, and that was the birthday of our Church. Pope Francis also said, the message of hope contained in God's blessing was fully realized in a woman and none other than our Blessed Virgin Mary who destined to become the mother of God and it was fulfilled in her before any other creature. The Holy Father added that our journey of faith is the same as that of Mary and so we feel that she is particularly close to us. The idea of the coronation of Mary in heaven after her assumption took its rise in an accommodation of the words in the Song of Songs. Yan. Come, my beloved. Yan, yung mga Song of Songs. The earliest existing example is probably the mosaic in Santa Maria in Trastevere in Rome when she was crowned. Yan, yung 1140 yan. So the crowning of Mary as queen of all creation is the culmination of all the privileges granted to Our Lady. The Mother of God assumed body and soul into heaven, is raised by the Most Holy Trinity above the choirs of angels and all the saints. Greater than you, only God, exclaim the Christian people. Okay? Ito messianic uh, psalm, no? King of King's glory and also to the glory of the Queen. Thou art fairest and so on. So by the throne, O God, is forever without end. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So yan, give ear, O daughter. Okay, that is how Mary modeled it to us when she listened to the message of the angel Gabriel. So she is brought to the king the bejeweled daughter, okay? And then, makikita natin, fast forward, the liturgy, yung may pinagdiriwang natin sa misa, applies this sum to Christ and Mary in heavenly glory. This interpretation is based on passages in the Gospels that refer explicitly to Our Lady. Yung pista ngayon, the Annunciation, Saint Gabriel reveals to Mary that her son will reign forever over the house of Jacob and his reign will have no end. Mary is to be mother of a son who, at the very instant of his conception as man, is king and lord of all creation and the mother who is to give birth to him will share his queenship. O di ba? Ang laki ng karapatan ng ating mahal na ina na maging queen na makuronahan. And then nung bumisita siya kay Saint Elizabeth, no sabi ni Saint Elizabeth, "Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me?" Yung mga Lord kasi is title given to kings. Okay? And Saint John the Evangelist also said, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and on her head, a crown of 12 stars. Yan. And St. John the Evangelist in his vision, okay, makikita natin, she is 
the queen of the universe. According to the church's liturgy and tradition, this woman is Mary, who with Christ defeats the infernal dragon and is enthroned as queen of the universe. The meaning suggests the final moment of the assumption and the reference in the apocalypse to a crown of 12 stars. It seems to be a second feast of the assumption, emphasizing the bodily aspect of the mystery. Blessed Virgin Mary, the crown is recalled in the verse of the medieval hymn, and it says, After to heaven he took his flight, and there he sits with his father of might, with him is crowned that lady of light, redemptoris mater. Philia Sion, thou art the flower, full sweetly thou shalt thou sit by me, and bear a crown with me in tower. And all mine saints to thine honor shall, shall honor thee, mother, in my bliss, that blessed body that bear me in, in bower, veni coronaberis. Hear the crown. After placing the Blessed Virgin Mary on this exalted and super eminent throne, the Lord declared to the courtiers the heaven of heaven all the privileges she should enjoy. And of this participation in His Majesty, the person of the Eternal Father, as the first principle of all things, speaking to the angels and said to them, Our daughter Mary was chosen according to our pleasure, from all among all creatures. And, okay, the Christian people have always attested to Mary's exalted glory as a sharer in Christ's royalty. Like him, it is hers by birth as mother of the king and by right of conquest as his faithful co-worker in the redemption. Our Lord has placed in her hands the superabundant merits he gained by his death on the cross so that she might distribute to them according to God. The queenship of Mary is a consoling truth of all mankind, especially when we feel deserving of divine punishment as a just penalty for our church. Therefore, the church invites us to have recourse to Mary, our mother, and our queen in all necessities. Mary is the mother of God and mother of all mankind, is what grounds our filial trust in her powerful intercession and encourages us to get up our, after our falls. And today, few minutes from now, we witness the crowning of Our Lady of the Atonement, the patroness of our diocese. We invoke her with the words of an ancient prayer. And we say, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping. So with this prayer, we place all our trust in Mary because a mother always hears the supplications of her children. And in the memorary, we also pray, Remember, O most ver gracious, gracious Virgin Mother, we, we tell her when you stand in the sight of the Lord to speak well of us. Our Lady will speak well of us before the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and obtain from God all that we need above all grace of final perseverance which will open to us the gates of heaven. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And to end, I will sing Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, give us wisdom, give us love. Our Lady of the Atonement, pray for us that in all things, God may be glorified. Thank you very much.